Wow. I just got that new Godox 60 watt portable LED and that thing is bright when it's in your face. You can tell, very hard light. Just got it in a reflector. I'm looking for a quick setup today because today, bringing us new information about the Godox ADB2, it turns out that somewhere along the way, things got misconstrued about how this was gonna be designed and a lot of incorrect information out there, including stuff that I originally said. We're gonna clear all that up. So let's get the big thing out of the way. The ADB2, this is not designed to have a 360 bulb in the center. In fact, I can show you guys right here. There's two ways it'll slide in, but neither of those ways will actually deliver power. And in my first video, how I actually got it in was like that, but it's not meant to. That's why the fit is so bad because Godox actually somewhere along the lines changed their plans and decided not to make the center column ready for a 360 bolt. Now let me tell you why I think they made that call. This is 100% speculation, not confirmed, but I think this makes sense. So originally, Godex planned for the two outside ports to be compatible for a 200 bulb and the inner port to be cross compatible and draw from both power packs into the center bulb and then use the Godex 8360, which is actually a 400 watt bulb. But the problem is, if you make the center column fit the 8360, because the pins are so similar and because the 8200's bulbs are just a bit smaller, then that means the 8200 bulb would also fit in the center. And if you had both of the power packs, both of the 8200s deliver their maximum power to that center port, then you're really at risk for blowing this bulb up because this bulb is not designed. The 8200 bulb is not designed for 400 watts. So overdoing that power could put users at risk. So I think Godox made the call that instead of having all the warnings in the world, like Flashpoint already did on their website previously, I think instead of that, they just decided it's already getting 400 watts through the outside ports. Let's not make that center port compatible with both power packs because we don't want anybody getting hurt. Again, purely speculative. It might not be about people getting hurt. It might be about them getting sued. Whatever the case, they decided not to go with that. If you guys look really close, you can see on the front, there are three numbers. On the top pins, there is a one. In the center pins, there is a one. And on the bottom, there is a two. On the back, there is a one and a two. If you put one power pack here in the one slot, then that will send power to either the top set of pins or the middle set of pins, both marked with a one. And if you put one on the two, then it's going to send power to the bottom. Also, the LEDs are independent of the power packs. So one power pack cannot power both LEDs. The one will power the left LED, and the two will power the right LED. And if you put a bulb in the one in the middle, then you can't put anything in the top or the bottom. So Godex essentially pivoted their plans, and now the center one is designed to only work off of the one power pack, and it's only a means to put one bulb in the center of a fixture to give you an even pattern of light. Because if you wanted to just use this as your Bowen's S-mount adapter with a single power pack, which again, it still will give you a third stop extra power over using it in a Bowen's S-mount, then you're gonna get an uneven pattern of light because it's going to hit the top of the modifier harder than it's gonna hit the bottom in a reflection. So to combat this, now this center column, when using with one light, you will get an even pattern of light and good to go if you wanna use it with just one pack. So to prove that no power from the second pack, hey, see, two slot, right side, right side LED. That's how it works, but let's turn that off. So you can see, now that I have it mounted in the one slot, if I'm hitting test on this, nothing's gonna fire. And the reason it's not firing is because there is no wiring from the two pack to the center bulb, as I said before. And you have to have the one power pack on in order to deliver any power to that center bulb. So with the production copy of the Godox ADB2, despite what I said in the previous video, there are only two ways that you would use this. This is one, two power packs, two bulbs in the outside slots, or one in the center with one power pack in the one slot only. Again, doesn't matter if you put that second power pack on, it's not gonna do anything, it's not gonna harm your bulb, it's not gonna send any power, 
Essentially, it's pointless to have it on if you've got a bulb in the center position. So everyone had the details on that 8360 bulb wrong. There were working prototypes of the ADB2 with the 360 bulb fully operational from both packs in the center, but that no longer exists. That is not how any of these will be delivered, whether you get them from Godox, Flashpoint, Cheetah, uh, Molite, anybody. No one is gonna be able to purchase one of those 360 capable versions. And now Flashpoint and Flash Havoc and websites discussing this product are updating their site with the proper information. Most of this change has happened in the last 24 hours. I've been trying to correct it because this is my third video now concerning the ADB2 and I'm very sorry to put out information that was incorrect, but everybody thought it. No matter where you read on the internet, everybody thought that was what it was designed for. Now let's talk about some other questions that I've been asked. I, I touched on how it has independent power pack to specific ports. One power pack will not fire both ports under no circumstance. It will also not illuminate both LEDs. So this is a useless thing to do. It's gonna work, it's gonna fire the top bulb, but that bottom bulb isn't going to do anything. You're better off putting it in the center. And that independent wiring also applies to both LED panels, there is no way to operate both LED panels with a single power pack. So we turn this on. All right. So you can see I have to hit, you can see I'm hitting the left one in order to turn the left one on. And if I take, there's just no hope of turning this right one on. Uh, this right one is not coming on without a power pack right here. Now, in terms of brightness of the LEDs, I saw on Flashpoint that it was listed as two 20 watt bulbs. Not quite sure that's accurate because that would be 40 watts of total power. Cause I'm looking at a 60 watt LED bulb right now. And that is far more powerful than I know these to be. However, this is more powerful than the 8600. It's roughly double because when I metered it, it was 1.1 stops to 0.9. But when they're put equal distance from a wall, this casts a little bit bigger of a spread of light because of the two LEDs being spaced apart and the center, the, the brightest point of it is also one full stop higher than the LED that you'll find on an 8600 or Explorer 600. So using this LED is not gonna help you much outdoors, but studio environment, think it'd be okay. One thing to consider guys, this is an omnidirectional bulb with flash. The whole purpose of a modeling light is to see the pattern of light that you're gonna get from your modifier. An omnidirectional bulb is going to send the light outwards and then through, whereas these LEDs just go straight out. So these two LEDs on the side are not going to give you an extremely accurate representation of the light pattern that you're going to get from a strobe, just so you guys can expect that. Another question that was asked is, do the LEDs pulsate with the flash? No, they do not. They just stay on constantly the whole time. So again, I apologize for the incorrect information. I hate to put out news and get a ton of views on something and just to have it be incorrect. I did take the necessary steps to omit that information from previous videos. So if my last video seems a little bit choppy, now you know why. If you guys could help me out and spread this information to people who are interested in the product, because a lot of people were expecting that 360 bulb flexibility and now that it's gone, I don't think it's a deal breaker. I personally don't care. Heck, this means I really will never touch the 360 again. But there are some people who could plan on using it that way. And I'd rather them know in advance, especially since these things have been on pre-order from some companies for a while. We want to make sure that people are getting what they expected. Hope this helped you out. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Otherwise, keep on shooting, YouTube.